Um, I'd like to focus a little bit on the, uh, today to talk about um, HD Huntington disease drug discovery uh, using CROs as a model that we engage in at CHDI. Um, there are, throughout the talk, there's uh, Huntington disease mentioned many times. I'd like to just go over uh, briefly about what Huntington disease is about. Uh, it is an inherited neurodegenerative disease. It's a monogenic disease uh, by which that the striatum is uh, um, shrinked by 50% at the time of uh, patient is uh, diagnosed. Um, it is a late onset disease uh, with um, onset 30 to 50 years old. Um, and it is a 100% penetrant drug uh, disease with uh, one in 10,000 um, patients affected and one in 2,000 at risk in US. But we have a reason to believe that it is <coughs> its prevalence rate is exists in the world, including Asia. A hunting disease is also known as Huntington Korea because of the involuntary movement. However, um, HD also have a various symptoms, including cognitive, uh, sorry, cognitive deficits, especially in um, dysfunction in executive function. Also, um, behaviorally, <coughs> um, behavior and there's emotional defects such as mood swings and social withdrawals. Uh, currently, there is no disease modifying therapy. Um, Tetrabenazine was uh, recently approved to alleviate the correct symptom. <clears throat> uh, Huntington disease uh, is caused by the single uh, mutation in, in the gene <coughs> called Huntington, and uh, protein is called, also called Huntington as well, uh, um, as well. And it is actually a um, gigantic uh, protein with 3,144 amino acids. Uh, in N-terminal, uh, close to the N-terminal, there's a polyglutamine stretch uh, typically, um, in, in a normal subject, there are about uh, 23, 22, 23 polyglutamine stretch. But when, when the subjects have uh, polyglutamine stretch longer than 37, then the patient can develop a disease. And also, this Huntington is expressed in all tissues and expressed throughout the development. And the normal function is not well defined. And in animal model with the knockout of Huntington is embryonically lethal, so showing that there is some function of Huntington, but it's not well defined. And uh, when there's a mutant Huntington exists, there's a many um, uh, mechanisms, sorry. Many problems exist, such as aggregation and toxic fragments and autophagy impairments, as well as the signal dysfunctions occur. It's kind of similar to um, the amyloid or um, synuclein in other disease, in, in Alzheimer's as, as well as in Parkinson's disease. As Hans mentioned, uh, um, Hans presenter a company, we are also work in orphan disease. However, if we go further, actually, we exclusively working in Huntington's disease. Our company was found 2005 uh, as a nonprofit biotech company and uh, with a primary operation site in Los Angeles, but we expanded our uh, operation sites to uh, New York as well as Princeton office. We used to be known as HiQ Foundation, MRSSI, and CHDI Inc. However, because uh, people are confused with so many names, we consolidate name to CHDI Foundation Incorporated. Um, <clears throat> our company is very unique in a way that it is a virtual company uh, utilizing our source model. Actually, recently we bought the microscope for our company, so we're not completely virtual because we have a microscope in our company, but uh, nevertheless, the all operation is done through um, outsourcing model. Uh, we don't have any uh, wet labs. Uh, we have internal staff for over 50 people. Uh, we're continuous to, continuously hiring more people, or of half of the company um, as, as scientists. Um, currently, we have over 600 people working for us worldwide at the country research organizations, uh, biotechs, as well as academic laboratories. Uh, private funding, it is a privately held um, biotech company. Uh, our funding was about $100 million last year. We expect um, that it's over $100 million this year. So it is a pretty large operating company. As a single disease, probably we are the largest in the world. And our model is to rapidly discover and develop the drugs that delay or slow Huntington's disease. We cannot say cure because um, everybody is born with Huntington. So um, only thing we can really uh, push for is to delay or slow the onset. Our internal um, research and development uh, strategies are very similar to biotech company. Um, we have a system bi systems biology teams as well as uh, internal discovery with the internal pipe drug pipeline. We recently hired um, Christina Sampaio, who used to be a head, a chief um, 
uh, dural degenerative uh, disease sections in EMA. She's now clinical chief clinical officer, so we are very excited to have her, and she will um, uh, lead a clinical team. And also, we do uh, because we are very unique in a way that uh, it's a nonprofit that we were able to collaborate with a number of different companies, uh, sharing um, ideas, sharing uh, reagents, as well as uh, co-developing. Um, uh, mechanisms and uh, technologies, as well as the drugs. So I'll share some of the examples later on. Actually, uh, this is a kind of wrong slide, but I'll skip some of these because uh, time constraints. Our mission is, uh, is pretty bold. Uh, we try to develop a disease-modifying therapy. I know it is very challenging, but we think it's, we, it is achievable because uh, we are interested in upstream target and because it's monogenic uh, disease, we can target the source of a problem, which is mutant Huntington. So currently, uh, we're working with ISIS as well as uh, Enalum uh, using RNAi technology as well as AntiSense um, to target this uh, mutant Huntington. Uh, obviously, there are challenges with the distribution, um, delivery therapeutic windows, as well as, um, um, as, as, well, as, well as uh, 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 to, to deliver to the side of, uh, uh, of the problem. However, we, uh, we are working very diligently to, um, uh, to come up with, the, with a strategy to uh, mitigate these challenges. Also, uh, we are targeting to modulate post-translation modification of Huntington to decrease mutant, hunt, uh, mutant toxicity. Uh, challenges that is an early program, so to identify a particular target and intervention point is, is a bit challenging. Also, uh, for many years, uh, uh, Outside of CHDI, a number of academic collaborators have worked on uh, very diligently to find the mechanism central to Huntington disease. We have narrowed down a few uh, mechanisms, including aggregation and misfolding, as well as transcriptional uh, dysregulation and energetic dis uh, defects, as well as synaptic um, dysfunctions are the four mechanisms that we are currently charging and putting in internal programs to uh, find the therapy against those uh, mechanisms. Uh, obviously, um, there are multiple challenges with, uh, with these mechanisms pinpointing the specific targets. However, I, uh, we are making some progresses, <coughs> and I'll show you at the end of the slide what the number of programs that we have. Um, we are integrated biotech as, as any other integrated biotech and pharma, so we value this um, uh, consist, uh, the conservative appro approach to from from uh, research profiling all the way to the IND profiling and uh, phase one clinical trials. And we um, try to uh, ensure that every step is met for any compound that we put it into animals um, and, and hopefully in human. Um, and, but in order to do this, we need to find the right CRO who can really specialize in each components and, and that they are the world expert and the best we can find. And, um, and because of that, uh, it is very, very important for us to really find the right company uh, who can really work with us. And for the last uh, six, over six years, I've been um, um, visited and uh, do, uh, run a due diligence to find a number of companies that who can really do drug discovery for us, especially in preclinical models. And what I found was that uh, there is actually a benefit and a risk for outsourcing. Uh, as Karen mentioned some of the caveats and concerns, um, I have a very similar um, issues with uh, uh, finding uh, uh, right CROs, but there's a definite benefits to the outsourcing. First of all, uh, you don't really need the infrastructure uh, in your company to really uh, run this outsourcing model because you don't need a wet lab, you don't need equipment, you don't need a lab personnel. Uh, mostly, you don't really even need an internal expert to run the studies. As long as you find uh, the right partner who are expert in this particular um, uh, area of expertise. And, and also benefit is that you can minimize the downtime of data collection. And you can also uh, f have a very freedom to select the right partners. And if you have a problem with the partner, you can actually eliminate and look for another partner. So you have a little bit more um, free to, freedom to operate and, and select the companies. However, risk is that um, the uh, the finding a right partnership is very challenging. And uh, uh, oftentimes that uh, companies try to sell as, as much as they can, but when you actually go deep and dive and, and uh, learn about the company, you don't know, uh, you, you, you begin to discover what's the core and non-core functions of the company is. So you really need to do um, proper due diligence. 
And, and sometimes you have very little control over contractors and partners' uh, business directions. If a company decides to close it down and move on to a different direction, you have no and a little leverage to really uh, uh, salvage that, that issue and, and continue work. And as well as uh, because uh, you rely on third party, obviously internal QC and day-to-day uh, um, -day management is very challenging. But if you find the right partner who has a core of expertise and are willing to work with you side by side daily, um, you can really accelerate the ther uh, therapeutic development because they can really run uh, the study and with a fast turnaround data, uh, time and data. And you can always have a well-defined cost and projected resources. And you can also uh, do rapid survey and proof of concept tests on multi-therapeutic uh, areas. Um, obviously, for us, it's Huntington. So we cannot really go beyond Huntington. But for some of the companies who are interested in moving into Alzheimer's and other neurodegenerative diseases, obviously, uh, you don't need to have an internal expert to run it. But you just need to find the right partner who, do, who does uh, so. And also. Um, uh, CROs uh, typically are very objective and, uh, and provide empirical data package. So the, uh, and many of them are, are run in blind fashion, so there is a no uh, bias to the data you generated. However, as I mentioned to you, that if you find the wrong partner, you ended up spending a lot of my, uh, time and resources and getting, uh, getting no data that, that's uh, proved, proven to be uh, useful. And uh, as uh, you continue to work with the partners, you end up having a more cost uh, you know, compared to when you have internal uh, programs. Um, having said that, uh, the bottom line is that all CROs are not created equal. And uh, finding a right CRO with a group of talents and commitment is a key to success. <clears throat> so um, when we run up um, research uh, units uh, at CHDI, one of the gap, gaps of the drug discovery was really finding a right animal model. Uh, oftentimes, we rely on animal models uh, data to push toward, toward the IND filing, uh, filing as well as the uh, clinical trials. And uh, this is one uh, kind of a nice uh, uh, overview that uh, recently published uh, by the University of British Columbia group. And this is an example of uh, progression of the disease in human as well as there are a list of animal HD animal models developed. Uh, some of these were partnered with us to develop um, these models. And one thing that um, I'd like to highlight is that um, uh, many of the phenotypes that you see in Huntington disease in patients are also seen in animal models. Although there's onset and timeline is a little shifted in animal models, but many of these behavior cognitive deficits, especially uh, brain atrophy, are seen in all the animal models. So we are very confident and we are very hope, uh, thankful to have uh, these models at our disposal to run the drug to, uh, develop campaign. Uh, two um, models that we've been uh, extensively um, using for our drug discovery is R62. Um, one is uh, and this is an example of um, R62 showing the motoric and as well as uh, atrophy in, in early age. Uh, another model is a Q175 model, which is Naki model, where the human Huntington polyglutamine stretch is added to the, an, uh, to the animals. And when you do so, they develop um, similar phenotypes that you see in, in HD patients, but much more delayed than R62. So we are currently using these two models to really run a drug discovery. And these are the list of uh, comprehensive list of the, mar uh, the readouts we engaged in and in, in working with uh, CROs, including Charles River, um, because we don't believe in just one readout. We, we believe in the readouts that which, are, which can be potentially recapitulated in human disease. Um, one particular um, area that I'd like to focus is we recently developed the MRI and MRS measurements as one of the standard readouts in our, our um, efficacy models in animal, animal models. And um, the reason being is that uh, because we believe in drug discovery for, to, to develop a disease-modifying uh, therapy, it was important for us to really uh, pinpoint where the disease is most progressed, which is at showing atrophy in the striatum and the ventric enlargement. In R6, as I mentioned to you, the similar enlargement is seen in, R6, uh, in, in this model. One um, the case study I can share is that we were so excited about uh, uh, positive uh, motoric improvement 
with a drug called KW6002, which is a 2A um, adenosine 2A antagonist. However, when we ran um, this test uh, in MRI, MRS, we saw no, um, you know, no improvement by the drug in the total brain volume or stridal volume. And moreover, when we look at the um, spectroscopy where a couple uh, key metabolites are affected, which is such as uh, NNA, n aspartate, which is, uh, uh, which is uh, synthesized in the neuronal mitochondria, uh, which are impaired in, in typical in many neurodegenerative diseases, including Alzheimer's and HD. You also um, see in animal model, but the drug had no effect. Similarly, um, impairment of glutamine synthesis is seen also in this model as well as in HD patients um, because uh, there is an impairment between the neuron and glial interactions. And again, the KW compound didn't have any effect. So motorically, we saw the improvement. There's no effect in this modifying. So it was a very important that, uh, that uh, we emphasize on what is most important for us um, looking for the disease modifying uh, endpoint. And this was uh, uh, in collaboration with the Charles River, and we've, we are very uh, happy to uh, work with a partner such as Charles River uh, and Cerebicon to really have generate this kind of data. This is a kind of snapshot of, of all the programs that uh, we have. I just want to highlight that, uh, that ISIS and Enalem are the partners we are currently developing the, uh, for, for gene therapy. And in parallel, we have a small molecule uh, approach targeting uh, chimerin monooxygenase. Uh, because it is involving cytotoxicity. We are currently uh, actively working with the Pfizer, uh, developing uh, testing Pfizer uh, PDE isotype inhibitors um, in improving synaptic dysfunction. Also, um, we have an internal program on HDEC um, to, uh, to improve uh, uh, transcription on re dysregulation as well as improving aggregation. This is the last slide showing that um, the partners that we've been engaging for the last several years. Without these partners, uh, and their enthusiasm as well as their commitment, we will not uh, be able to, um, uh, to be here where we are. And so we are very grateful to have uh, um, partners. And uh, if anybody interested in Huntington disease therapy uh, for their molecules, um, please see me after the, after the talk, or you can send me an email. Uh, we'd love to uh, chat more, and, and hopefully we can uh, partner together to develop a, a, a disease uh, which is very, very, um, uh, in, uh, very challenging disease to find a therapy is really challenging, but uh, we hope that uh, one day we can find a therapy against it. Thank you.